show you the space that I'm working in here. Uh, it's just on my deck here in Montreal. I don't have a backyard, but it'll do just fine, I'm sure. Uh, I've done this in the past with my other tent to test uh, if I'm actually warm enough in the winter and if my tent will hold up fine. And so this year I will try this with the Namage. So this is my space here. It's a big deck. It's probably one of the bigger ones here in Montreal. And um, this is my view over to uh, what used to be a church. And I already prepared these uh, cinder blocks here to attach the tent to. By the way, I was actually hoping for a downpour today. It rained all night, it snowed earlier uh, yesterday evening, and I was hoping it would continue uh, into the morning so I can pitch the tent in the rain, because it's supposed to be uh, doing quite well in it since the inner tent is attached to the outer tent. But it has stopped raining, so I will just go with what I have. But it, the wind's supposed to pick up later on um, today, uh, 20 to 30 miles an hour. Um, maybe gusting up to 40 miles tonight and I will be sleeping in the tent tonight. Uh, I don't care if it's in the city or not, I've done this last year already and it's a lot of fun. You guys should actually do this as well if you buy new gear or if you consider going winter camping for the first time. Definitely test out your gear first to make sure it's warm enough for you. If you just go out backpacking and you, you see that your tent doesn't work out well or your sleeping bag isn't warm enough, uh, you can be in a lot of trouble. I attached it so far just to two points here at the, at the corners, just with some string here. And you have the rings here where the, normally the stakes would go through and I just use it as an anchor point for my block here on both sides. And now I will start with my poles. first part is done. I have to admit this was a little bit tougher than most of my other tents, uh, but keep in mind this is the very first time I'm doing this. It's not a freestanding tent, so it, the tension has to be just right and the wind was kicking up already. So uh, let's just keep going and I'll get all the guidelines attached. Thank you. 
Well, that looks pretty good actually. Uh, it takes quite a while to set up right uh, all the guidelines. Uh, there's quite a, a few points. There's um, three on each side and the front and the back for the ventilation and then the four points uh, for the initial setup. I think it takes longer uh, than my normal tents would but it also is supposed to withstand a lot more wind. So with the up to 40 miles an hour winds tonight, uh, I guess we'll see how good a job I did. So I just attached just regular string. It's really strong though. I attached it to each of the guy lines. And you can adjust them individually right here. Just by pushing them, uh, pulling them. has its own set that balances right there and you can adjust it here. I have to be a little bit more creative with my planter right there. I couldn't quite put it straight. The same here, it's a 45 degree angle from the back here. just attached to the stairs. That should be fine. But now I can't wait to actually see the inside. I've never even seen the inside before. So let's take a look. It's a beautiful tent, isn't it? Quite nice. So we have the zippers on the door here and you can see that you could actually with a toggle lock the zippers in place so they don't accidentally come loose in the storm. I did this earlier already to, to prepare the tent. Now it's time to open it up. fabric. I think it's actually the same that they used for the tent sticks that I showed you earlier. And the mosquito net, which can also be opened right here. And let's go inside too. Let me take off my shoes. So I'm really quite happy with this. It took a little time for the first time around, but I'm going to practice this again next weekend, um, taking it down to Adirondack Mountains to the Keen Farm. And uh, I think with uh, using the stakes then, um, I don't know if it's the snow stakes or the other ones, uh, should be a lot faster. Uh, just cutting the string each time took quite a bit of time, putting it around the block there um, to secure it. That was a bit of work obviously but it works for this test here better than just taking it out uh, in the back country and trying it there for the first time while you're in the storm and you don't know exactly how the tent works so this is a good test for sure
planted in the back. So I'm using the front here where the door is and where it's straight. Um, to has just more headroom. I do wish it had a few more pockets. My North Face tent has a gear loft and it has several more pockets than this one. Uh, that's something maybe to improve in the future for them, but otherwise I really love this tent. I'm also liking the, the fact that I have a, a footprint here in this big vestibule. I feel like I can just move around and do other things out here without sitting in the dirt. The other cool thing is that it actually has a label here of the person that made this tent. This one, one person sewing it and they put their name in it. So Karin, thank you for making my tent. This is quite amazing. Uh, made in Estonia. It's just a little factory there. They have uh, workers that have worked there for many years. And uh, one person just creates this entire tent for you. It's going to be my little home for tonight. In the middle of the city in Montreal, with the storm hopefully kicking up, that will be fun. The sky is still grey, still no rain or snow at all. It's been my luck all year, I haven't had a single rainstorm while camping out so far and I love the rain during camping. Oh well, maybe next weekend when I'm going down to the Adirondack Mountains. You can see this little loop here. I haven't noticed this before. I think I can actually attach maybe a line in here to this loop and to this ring to use as a oh, so this one here to use as a a line to dry maybe rain clothes or something. So I don't take them inside the tent, but I leave them out here in the vestibule instead. That's pretty cool. I we'll have to try this out later. Roll this up too. Oh, you can even do this one hander. Look, I'm getting better at this already. My little attachment to the bench there. You will also notice here on the door this strap to keep the tension uh, at a proper space. And the same here. There's one here and there's one in the back as well to keep this space properly because you could actually pitch the tent without the inner. You can just use it as a shelter um, from the storm and detach the inner tent by taking out all the toggles. But then uh, you still need the tension for the proper spacing. So this is what this line here is for. It feels a little out of place when you first see it and then you put uh, put the tent together but it makes a lot of sense to, uh, when you see as a whole. This is one here, here as well. And here you see the little toggles. I showed you earlier for the zipper right here. Here's the toggle for the footprint. Everything is designed really quite well. Look at all the sewing and super sturdy high end zippers and uh, really beefy great metal zippers. Look at these, they will never break, probably. There are a few more stakeout points that I didn't mention before. I'm not using those right now, obviously, but maybe in super windy conditions or when I'm actually out camping. I will also uh, use these as well. So you have those on all the poles. And you also have extras to, to stake out the back here. I also have reflectors in several points of the tent. Let's see. There's one here. The guidelines actually reflect on it. I guess I'll find out later on tonight. 